Thank you for tuning in to a brand new feature here on Spaced Out Radio's YouTube channel called True Tales. This is where we will have real people, like you, telling their stories of amazing experiences and encounters, some so surreal that there is no way they should exist. Or do they? If you're new to our channel, please do us a favor and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when we're going live on the show. Also, you can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Don't forget to check out our website as well. It's easy, spacedoutradio.com. Thanks for listening. My name is Dave Scott, host of Spaced Out Radio. And I thought I would kick things off with a creepy story that happened to me recently. Please leave a comment down below in the comment section and let me know what you think or tell me your experience. I died. I died today. No, not in real life, but in a dream that was so surreal that it has literally shaken me to the core. Right now, as I am speaking about this, I find that my anxiety level is at an all-time high because of this dream. Was it a dream? Or was it something more that I have yet to understand? Right now, I'm not so sure. You see, I've always had a fear of death, to the point where, even as an adult, as I've aged, there have been times where it's rattled me so badly that I've literally put my running shoes on and sprinted down the street as fast as I could because mentally I thought I could outrun the inevitable. Deep down, though, I know it's impossible. I was 15 years old when I first experienced death in my life. It was when my maternal grandmother passed away. I remember feeling awkward, like I should cry, and I did. However, I wasn't sure how much I was supposed to cry, or at my young age, was I supposed to be a young, tough man and hold it in the way men should? I wasn't particularly close to my grandmother, unfortunately. I wish I would have got to know her better. I was always so much closer to my dad's parents. The first time I realized that I wasn't immortal was when I was 18, when a young man I used to hang out with in high school, named Kyle, was killed in a car accident. We had graduated, and he was from a much more affluent family than I came from. He went his way, and I went mine prior to graduating, but when we had run into each other afterwards, there was always cordial conversation. I remember attending his funeral and thinking, holy shit, this life can end just in an instant. I always thought about what his parents went through. From what I had heard, his father had a very tough time with the loss. I couldn't imagine how my own parents would cope through that. Unfortunately, I'd find out a lot later, years later, when my nephew Bryce, my parents' first grandchild, would unexpectedly die from a fentanyl overdose in the summer of 2018. No one should have to bury their own child. It was one of the true horrors of my life. My real fear with death came in 1999, when my daughter was four months old. She had awakened, and I was rocking her and carrying her around the house, comforting her much like any daddy would for his baby girl. I was 25 years old. As I was rocking her, I was whispering in her ear how beautiful she was, how I was going to love her forever. Then it hit me. How was I going to protect her forever? How was I going to be there for her? forever. It was that word forever that set me off, and I felt the sinking in my stomach that I had just lied to my infant daughter. How can I be there for her forever when I know one day I will die? Oh no, I'm going to die. I don't want to die. I want to be there, always for my baby girl. The tears and the panic immediately started to flow and kick in. As I was holding my daughter, I kept apologizing to her that one day her daddy was not going to be there for her. One day this beautiful life would come to an end. Then what? It's over? It's gone? Ashes to ashes? Dust to dust? I have always believed in God, but what if science is right and there is no God to comfort me, to bring me home, and if there is a God, and we are supposed to be of His creation, then why did He create us just to die? This still doesn't make sense to me and hauntingly creates knots in my stomach. My daughter was about a year old when I had my second big panic attack over death. We lived on Vancouver Island in a small town called Parksville. I was coaching hockey for a team out of Port Alberni. 
That night, we had had a game in Courtney Comox, which we had won 4-2. It was just before midnight when I left the hockey arena to start the near hour-long trek home on the island highway. The four-lane highway was near empty at that time of night. It was just me, the radio, and my thoughts. I'm going to die. I started thinking, my parents are going to die, my friends are going to die, my dog was going to die, my daughter will one day die, I can't believe this. Why God? Why? I started screaming in my car as loud as I could because I wanted to make sure God could hear me and the anger I was throwing at him. Tears started filling my eyes to the point where I was having trouble seeing the highway. My face became a soaked mess from crying. My throat started to hurt from my screaming tantrum that I was having with God. He was going to hear me, and damn it, he was going to listen. I was driving faster and faster, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 kilometers an hour over the speed limit. I saw a light ahead. A concrete overpass became visible from the streetlights. There was no oncoming traffic. There was no one ahead of me and no one behind me, just me, my anger, my anxiety, and what is that on the highway? I just caught a glimpse of something big on the highway ahead of me. What was that? Way in the distance, standing in the middle of the highway, was the biggest buck deer I had ever seen. It was standing there, not moving, about 500 yards away, and I could start to see the reflection of its eyes from my high beam headlights on my car. The gap between me and this deer was quickly fading due to the speed I was traveling at. That's when I felt a giant hand placed on my right shoulder, like someone was comforting me from the back seat of my sunfire. When I felt that hand touch me, immediately I felt a sense of calm and relief. I started catching my breath from my tantrum, and more importantly, I started slowing down the vehicle. At about 200 yards from the deer, it still hadn't moved from the middle of the lanes, but I was breathing easier. My eyes were drying. Then I heard this deep male voice say to me, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. I still felt that hand holding onto my shoulder as I kept slowing down my car, eventually coming to a complete stop about 100 yards back from this buck. When my car stopped, I just sat there with my foot on the brake. The deer and I made eye contact. It was like it knew what I was going through. The panic attack I was having must have been felt by this wild animal. Was I having some sort of religious experience? After what seemed like minutes, but was actually only seconds, the deer broke eye contact with me, turned its head forward, and then sauntered off the highway before making its way up the embankment. I sat there for a couple of more minutes alone on the highway as the hand on my shoulder seemed to fade away. Calm, now relaxed, and breathing steadily, I put my foot back on the gas pedal and made my way home. Over the next couple of decades, the panic attacks came and went, but nothing prepared me for this latest encounter. I died. I remember climbing into bed at about 1 o'clock in the morning. I played my video game for a few minutes to tire out my mind. When I knew it was time for bed, I turned my game off and started listening to a documentary about dogman encounters. Now normally I'm not someone who can remember my dreams. The only time I seem to is when I have encounters with aliens. Yes, whether you believe in this phenomena or not, I am an ET contactee. But this time, the dream I remembered was just as vivid, but highly different. It actually came a few days after I had an ET encounter. In my dream, I remember my body thrown lengthwise into water. My entire body hit the water. I felt the splash, yet I was not moving. I couldn't move. As soon as the splashes of water were all around me, the air bubbles started moving up to the surface. I realized I was sinking, just me, in my body. I knew I was dead. I saw the sunlight above the water starting to get greener as my body started sinking deeper and deeper. I tried to breathe. I couldn't because I knew I was dead. Still sinking, and as the water started getting darker and darker, and the bright light from the sun started getting smaller and smaller above the water, I tried moving my arms to swim up. They wouldn't move. I tried kicking my legs. It was no use. I was dead. I was trying to scream, or at least see if I could inhale water through my nose or mouth, but it was no use. Nothing in my body was working, because I knew I was dead. In my head, I started to panic. 
I didn't understand what was happening. It was then that I felt my lifeless body settle gently on the bottom of this watery grave. I was staring up at this small beam of light above me, knowing that I would never leave this spot again. My body was going to be here until the fishes started eating away at me. I recall looking around from the corners of my eyes and not seeing any fish around at this point. I started wondering what was happening on the surface of the water and why there was no one coming to rescue me. Then I remembered again, I was dead. Panic attack number two. I started thinking, why, if I was dead, was my soul trapped in my body underwater? Why wasn't I leaving my body? Was I really supposed to be down here for good? Where was God in all of this? Why wasn't I released to the heavens to fly around freely? I was trapped here in my watery grave. I didn't understand any of this. I knew that eventually my body would decay. Then what? What would happen? Where would I go? Would I stay with my eventual skeletal remains, staring up at the light above? I remember thinking, this is going to be really boring sitting here in this fresh water for eternity. God? God? Where are you? Are you there? Why is this happening? Why am I here? Can you hear me? Do you know that I am stuck down here? The panic continued. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I started to try and grasp. I wanted to cry, yet I couldn't because I was dead. That's when I woke up, gasping to get air deep into my lungs. I sat up, awake for a bit before dozing back off until my alarm woke me up for the morning. A dream. All in a dream. The reality is, something happened that night. I felt it. It was completely surreal. I just don't know what the message is, or was it a future reality? All I know is that on that night, I died. And I never want to die again, even though I know it's inevitable. Thank you so much for tuning in to our first edition of True Tales here on Spaced Out Radio's YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. And please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, we are live with Spaced Out Radio right here on YouTube every Monday through Friday, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time for three hours of great paranormal talk. We'll talk to you soon.